Hi and welcome back to the channel, I am Clifton 3 d and today we are going to be taking a look at One Piece, of course at the Rotten Tomato scores and at CBR and what is to come in the One Piece franchise. Alright, without further ado, let's get into this video. Seeing the audience score of 95%, having seen many reviews, watching people talk about it who don't normally seem all that interested in IPs like this, makes me think most people would call One Piece live action a success. It absolutely did what it set out to do, and got people interested in the show, in the entire franchise. Yellow Flash, Gary from Nerd Rotic, even Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, all have praised this show, and they are getting into the manga and anime. People are giving the show a second chance. Much like myself, I have watched the show on and off, but never really got past a certain point. Over 1,000 episodes is rather daunting, but taking a play out of the rule book from Brandon the Anime Guy, watch one arc at a time, watch something else and go back to it. Take your time. It isn't going away, and remember, Oda has come out and said that the ending is closing in and it is already planned out. So you won't have another 1,000 episodes to watch by the time you reach the current 1,000 episode. 95% audience score seems to be in line with what people actually think of the show. Of course, Rotten Tomatoes has come under fire for paying their critics to score in one way or another, and it makes anything they say hard to believe. Like the recent score of 100% critics on Castlevania Nocturne, while the people actually watching it seem to be more divided with 50%. But if we take a look at this, the top critics picked by Rotten Tomato gave the show a 67%. These are the 15 critic gods, those who must know best, according to Rotten Tomatoes. Which this all leads me into what is going on and what I believe we will see more of. People at places like CBR coming out attacking the show for being problematic, attacking the creators and the source material as racists. You will see more articles like this one, why Usopp's African origins is so problematic. A One Piece SPS column revealed what should have been interesting trivia about Usopp but instead veers straight into problematic territory. One Piece creator Ichiro Oda's reply regarding Usopp's nationality raises concerns by overlooking the richness of individual cultures and people. Usopp's design featuring exaggerated lips and, large, and a large nose closely resembles blackface, uh, invoking racist stereotypes. Netflix's live app action adaptation of One Piece portrays Usopp in a more respectful and sensitive manner. The character avoids exaggerated physical features, and the diverse world of the series allows Usopp to be a natural fit rather than a token representation. Or this one, Arlong Park. Arc is aging weirdly where they get into how the Fishmen are a minority, an ethnic group who have been held down. And yes, when I saw this and many other scenes in the live action show, I knew that these weirders would call it out. You can't have people beating up and defeating bad guys. That is problematic because the bad guys are just fighting for their freedom. These weirdos are attacking the source material that has been ongoing for over 20 years now. They didn't bother with it at the time, but because there is a show out that people actually enjoy, and it's not some woke political agenda-driven nonsense, it must be attacked. Like with the Usopp issue, the creator Oda has been asked in the past about the nationalities of the characters. Oda said that just going off of their appearance, the Straw Hat Pirates would be from many locations. Protagonist Monkey D. Luffy would be Brazilian. Roronoro Zoro, the Swordsman, would be Japanese. Nami, Swedish. 
Zanji Wismoke, French Chopper would be Canadian, Nico Robin would be Russian, Frankie would be American, and Brooke would be Australian. While answering the question, Oda said that Usopp was simply from Africa. Of course, this ignores the fact that Africa isn't a country, but rather a continent. A continent made of 54 very different countries, including densely populated cultural diverse ones like Nicaragua and Egypt. This comes from a place that claimed Cleopatra must be black because she was merely born in Egypt. But let's go ahead and get into this part of the article. Netflix proudly presents Usopp as a person of color. Netflix's One Piece is a modern anime adaptation for a modern audience, complete with tasteful and sensitive portrayals of everyone and everything involved. It's doubly important to avoid problematic elements in live action since the characters are portrayed by real people who may represent equally real cultures and ethnic groups. Netflix's One Piece did well in this area, most of all with Usopp himself. Like, I get what you're trying to say there. However, nobody cares about the actor's background when they are watching a show or a movie that has nothing to do with their background, with their actually real life background. And I think look, I'm I'm very sad that this actor Jacob Gibson is is you know getting pulled into this by CBR or by anyone because I think he did a phenomenal job. I absolutely love the portrayal as Usopp. I like him in the anime, in the manga, and in the live action. He's an absolute great character. And that's just you know pointing out that there was nothing wrong with the source material, but these people at CBR, and I'm, I, I can promise you there will be more people going out and attacking this show, not the show in, in itself itself, but doing exactly this, saying, yes, the show is for modern audiences, and they fix the issues of the source material. They are going after the source material because people actually love it. To begin with, there was nothing exaggerated about Usopp's physical appearance, since he was not drawn in a cartoony style, and that is exactly it. It was a cartoony style, an anime style that they went for. It was nothing racist, it was nothing problematic, it was just a drawn style. And the actor Jacob Gibson did not use any prosthetics, makeup, or other effects to alter his appearance. His acting and anime-accurate costume were significant to make him recognizable as the beloved Usopp. And yes, I agree with this part, that they didn't need the prosthetic nose and stuff like that. However, it would have just been a fun callback if they had done that, because this character is fun. He's a comic relief. He... He might get on your nerves from time to time, and trust me, he's gotten on my nerves. But in general, this character is beloved, and he has been beloved for over 20 years, and no one up until now has bothered with going after the source material. Why? Sad thing is, we will be seeing more and more articles like this. This is to try to force the studio, the creators, to change the story to appease the ESG audience and credit where credit is due. The studio who brought us One Piece are the same people who brought us the Cowboy Bebop live action. They clearly learned from their mistakes, took to the source material, and listened to the actual creator of One Piece, and people are loving it. I hope the studio looks at what is actually being said by fans of the show and not to these weirdos. I certainly wish them a continued success with this show and any other that are to follow. What will be interesting is when the actors strike ends as well, which I don't think will be too much longer. 
are the interviews with the cast of One Piece. Everything I have seen from the cast makes me believe they love the show and the franchise themselves. But I am sure these weirdos will try to catch them off guard, trip them up. You know, we will see what happens then. Anyway, let me know down in the comments below what you think of the show, what you think of these weirdos, and if you're looking forward to more. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, smash that like button, consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications, because YouTube needs more than one confirmation to know you are interested in seeing more of my videos. And if you haven't already, go check out my full review of Castlevania Nocturne. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.